This is KGW News at Sunrise. Get ready for another week of closures. People in Multnomah County were hoping to finally have phase one reopenings for businesses today. But Governor Brown pumped the brakes last night, and it's not just Multnomah County. She's putting a hold on all reopening applications as the state navigates a new spike in coronavirus cases. And that's not the only thing on hold right now. Portland City Council is going back to the drawing board because the plan to cut $15 million from the police budget is considered not enough by one member of city council. Good morning, everyone, and may I say TGIF. I know you guys are as happy about that as I am. Thanks for getting up early with us. I'm smiling about Friday. <laughs> I'm smiling about Rod Hill joining us on this Friday for a look at our forecast. Oh, yeah. How about that, Rod? Good morning. Perhaps it's my yellow tie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I got up this morning. I looked at radar and there were big thunderstorms around Hood River, so we begin there. Right now, that heaviest rain and the lightning itself has moved up north, more toward Mount Adams. Uh, but there's what's left of your light show that may have, you know, wakened some of you folks out there in the gorge overnight. Uh, otherwise, on the radar, we're dry in Portland and Salem, but it is for a second straight morning, rainy up and down the coast. Portland scattered showers pick up a bit during the day today. Right now, 57, the high 67 weekend forecast coming up shortly. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. Today, businesses and restaurants in Multnomah County were prepared to start phase one reopening, but at the last minute, Governor Kate Brown said no deal. The state's most populous county and home to downtown Portland will stay closed today. All other reopening applications around the state are also on hold. Governor Brown tweeted out her decision just before 7.30 last night. She gave two main reasons for keeping Multnomah County closed. One, a significant increase in COVID-19 infections across Oregon. The state reported 178 new cases yesterday. That's the highest single day total since the pandemic began. She also said Multnomah County doesn't currently meet the health and safety criteria to enter phase one. She's talking about decreasing hospitalizations and positive tests and also tracing COVID cases. Well, Brenda, Governor Brown will talk more about her decision at a press conference that's scheduled for later this morning at 9 a.m. We're already hearing from a lot of people, though, our viewers, because there is a ton of reaction on our KGW Facebook page. We're going to share a few of your responses right here. We start with Sharon, who says the governor's decision makes sense to her. She says, too many people are acting right now like things are back to normal. I promise you, there it was. Now this is Amber. Amber says, as a restaurant worker who will be serving people without masks and close contact, then dealing with everything those customers touch with their mouth, she says she is glad to put off the risk a little bit longer. And then we do have one more comment to share with you from Chrissy. Chrissy is questioning the timing of this decision. She says local businesses like restaurants have been busy all day. She assumes prepping and cleaning and preparation for customers. And now she says those restaurants will lose money on all the fresh food they bought that really won't last for another week. Okay. Announcement Clackamas County made the decision not to apply for phase two yet. Commissioners there say they want to get a handle on the effects of phase one first. They also want more time to train newly hired contact tracers. Right now, Clackamas County is dealing with a sudden increase in cases. Leaders there will reevaluate once they get new guidance from state health officials. So what is driving up the numbers of new infections? Catherine Cook talked to a local health expert and got her take on what's happening right now. It wasn't the news anyone wanted to hear. On Thursday, Oregon health officials reported 178 new, confirmed, and presumptive COVID-19 cases, the highest single-day total since the pandemic began. It beat Sunday's previous single-day record of 146 cases. Also, two more deaths brought Oregon's death toll to 171. The sudden spike comes after months of social distancing and a period many hoped would lead to a healthy decline, not increase in COVID cases. But public health experts caution, we need to put these numbers into context. The recorded number of cases doesn't always reflect the actual number of cases. Dr. Claire Wheeler is an assistant professor at OHSU's School of Public Health. She attributes the recent spike to a couple things, what she calls mini outbreaks and better testing. 
So what we have seen in the recent weeks is a big uptick in our testing capabilities and getting testing done as well as contact tracing, which then leads to more targeted, focused and appropriate testing so that we have a much higher likelihood of finding the cases that are out there. Multnomah County accounts for 24 percent of the state's latest cases with 43. Clackamas had the most with 47. Dr. Wheeler says this spike could stem from Memorial Day weekend, a time when many people relax their social distancing guidelines. She warned the new numbers may set reopening back, and now we're seeing exactly that with the governor's latest announcement. As reopening continues and the impact of maybe the protests starts to happen and we stop meeting those guidelines, things are going to have to close down again. Dr. Wheeler says no matter what, there's going to be an uptick in COVID cases with each reopening phase. Our hope is, is that we can judiciously, you know, manage each uptick until we get to that point where we have enough immunity in the community to limit, you know, to make it to make us able to open everything without risk. Until then, she says, remember the critical basics, wear masks, wash your hands and stay six feet apart. Also, avoid tight spaces where that's not happening. It's perfectly OK to walk into a place and say, you know, this doesn't feel safe to me. Hardly anyone's wearing a mask. Let's go get our coffee somewhere else. Catherine Cook, KGW News. OK, let's switch gears and talk politics and public safety. Deep cuts appear to be on the way for the Portland Police Bureau. Here's where this story stands right now, Brenda. City Council was set to approve a new budget that would have taken away $15 million in police funding. But here's the big but. Commissioner Chloe Udaly voted no on that budget proposal, saying the $15 million wasn't enough. And without her support, the budget wasn't able to pass. Some activists have called for a total of $50 million to be cut from the Bureau. City Council will take up the budget issue again next week. Now, before the protests began a couple of weeks ago, Portland police were set to get a funding increase. Now, if these cuts that are being talked about go through, as many as 84 positions could be eliminated. City Council did agree to disband the gun violence reduction team and the school resource officer unit. New police chief Chuck Lavelle is now officially on the job. He was sworn in yesterday and he spoke with reporters about the changes ahead. He says he knows this is a critical time for the Bureau. And when asked about the potential for major cuts, here's exactly what the new chief said. I don't think any police chief wants the police defunded. Uh, the citizens of Portland, citizens of cities and towns and counties throughout the country need police services. There are things that happen that need to get responded to and investigated. Um, crime doesn't stop because of a pandemic or because of mass protests. Um, at the end of the day, people need good police service. And I think that's what the real call is for, police service that's just and meets the needs and expectations of the community. So I don't think defunding per se is the answer. We need to kind of right fund, right size, right align, uh, right incentivize, and uh, get people the police service that they want that makes sense for them and uh, is in the best interest of the community. That was Chief Lavelle. He also talked about wanting to emphasize community policing, and he says he wants people to personally know, like really get to know the officers who patrol their neighborhoods and their businesses. He says fostering relationships like that improves accountability. Speaking of the protest, the group was back out last night in front of the Justice Center downtown. These are photos from Oregonian photographer Jeff Killen, who was out there and live tweeting last night. Police say demonstrators shook the fence. They actually threw fireworks at officers at two different points. Officers say they had to break up the crowd and they did make several arrests again last night. Before that happened, people gathered at Revolution Hall last night like they have been for most of the last two weeks. Local educators led last night's march with hundreds joining up to show support. And there was this smaller march at Beverly Cleary School in Northeast Portland. Now this march was meant to be for kids and their families. There was not the risk there about being in a large crowd. So this again was perfect, people thought, for kids and their parents. We really wanted to have a march from our school to show support for our neighborhood and our community and to have something that younger kids and families could attend. Because a lot of families do want to show their support, but they don't feel comfortable taking their younger kids um, downtown where it could be more dangerous. 
So the organizers of that event, also a little younger. Eighth graders actually organized that march, and they did it all through social media. We get into the Rodney Hill weekend weather forecast with this live look right now. This is Pacific Ooh. City Pelican Brew Pub there on the lower left hand corner of the screen. Ooh. We put Rod Hill right in the middle of your screen right now because he has the all important weekend weather information. <laughs> hey Rod. Good morning. Uh, you know, the last couple of days we've been talking about showers. We've seen them on radar, but overall there hasn't been much rain. The weather system uh, that's been sitting offshore still sits out there today and then it finally pushes inland tomorrow. So tomorrow is the one day that looks to be certainly more wet than dry. Let's get you going. I'll take you through everything. Here's radar. We had thunderstorms just a couple hours ago in the Hood River Valley. All of that's moved up now north of Mount Adams. You can see the rain along the coast and also some showers out across uh, eastern Oregon. Good morning, Tillamook. Good morning, Astoria. You are wet, but nothing right now up and down the I-5 corridor. Future cast shows showers picking up a little bit later this morning around 10 o'clock. There's a wave of some rain moving through mid-afternoon. So again, a lot of today's dry, but I think most of us today actually will see a shower or two uh, at some point during the day. And then here we are tomorrow morning. Now the rain's starting to pick up. 8 o'clock, look at that. That all comes through. Here we are, 2 p.m. Now it's been raining more than not. And then those showers start to dwindle in number as we get you rolling through the evening hours. So how much rain are we talking about? Not much today, but... Certainly over a quarter of an inch looks to be a good bet uh, for the day tomorrow. There's the seven-day. Hmm. Hey, there are signs that the latter part of next week we finally get out of this. And we get back to sun. We get back to warmth. <laughs> sun and warmth. I didn't know if you were holding your heart because something was hurting there, Rod, or if, uh, if the forecast is just near and dear to your heart. We'll have more with Rodney coming up here in about eight minutes. We are getting ready for our next block of news, and it includes this story. State park campgrounds are reopening, and some are actually filling up pretty quickly. But even in the great outdoors, people are telling us that they will take safety measures to help stop the spread of coronavirus. We're going to let you know what you should consider before your next camping trip. So yes, camping may be in your future this summer, but there are a lot of great events around this area that are not happening because they've either been canceled or postponed this year. We don't want to forget about those events. We're going to pay tribute to some great summer events throughout our area, and we start this morning with this look back at Cruz and Sherwood. It would have happened this week for the 30th year in a row. We're going to pay tribute to Cruz and Sherwood next right here on Sunrise. 